Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to install Hackintosh ICR the new way using Proxmox. So let's get into it. So you can see I'm on Proxmox here. Um, we're actually going to need a few things. So we're going to need the Open Core ISO and also the um, Mac OS installation. So if we go to my tutorials GitHub page that's in the description below and go to the Hackintosh High Sierra you can see we've got the guide here. So we're going to need these two files here. So if I click on that and click download we're going to download that and also download the torrent. So for the torrent you need something called transmission. So to do to get that, it's just a simple search on Google, which is pretty simple. Um, you want to click download and then just follow the installation process using the MSI file. But once you've got it installed, you'll get a window that looks a bit like this. So you can see the window is very blank because we need to click the icon at the top open a torrent and then find where that torrent file downloaded so I'm going to just do that right now and then you'll get a window um, you can see here you want to untick the whole thing at the top scroll down to releases expand that and then you want to just download high Sierra once you've done that click open and you can see there that it'll start to download um, but mine's already downloaded so I don't need to do that but once we've got it downloaded we want to uh, do the next part so if we go back onto Proxbox um, we want to upload the ISO so yours will be in local and then ISO images you're going to just click upload and then select the file I've already got them here so I've got the open core v19 ISO and also the High Sierra one somewhere here at the top. Now we're ready to um, actually create the VM. So let's do that. So to create the VM, we want to just click Create VM. Give it a name. So why not copy me? Hackintosh the new way. High Sierra. Bit of a long one. And then the VM ID, do it as a thousand. If it's free. Just so then we know that it's a thousand for the later steps. Then go to OS, select the open core ISO first. Remember what I just said, the open core ISO first. If you don't select it first, it won't work. And I'll be very upset if you ask for help because of this. Remember the ISO image open core V19 ISO. Then go to system. Want to select the machine to Q35 and the bias to OVMF UEFI. Then select uh, EFI storage and untick pre-enroll keys. Make sure this is unticked otherwise it doesn't work. Then on QEMU agent we want to tick that. Then go to disks. The next part we want to select SATA for the bus. Select where you want it to be stored and give it a size. I'm just going to turn on SSD em emulation and discard the disk. Then click on CPU, give it at least two cores, I'm just giving my four, and go to host for the type, then the RAM, give it as much as you like, I'll just do four here, and then for the model, change that to VMware VMX Net 3 on the network, and untick firewall, then click on next, it's going to give you a summary, just click finish, then on the side you'll soon see the 1000, and you can see it's all ready for us. So the next step is actually adding the other ISO and editing the arguments file. So let's do that. So I've selected my VMID 1000 here. Go to hardware. Add. DVD drive. Go to storage. And then find your high Sierra ISO. Making sure that the bus is IDE and the device is zero. Click add. And that's it for here. Now we want to go up to our node, so mine's called Hybrid Virtual Environment, click on that, go to shell, and then do the following command, nano etc pve 
to emu server 1000.conf. Do that. Then go to the RDE drives, scroll across, and where it says media CD ROM, you want to delete that and replace it with cache unsafe. Do that for both of them, both of the RDE. Then you want to go back over to the GitHub page and you want to select dependent on your CPU. So I'm running Intel, but if you're running AMD, you can use this. You want to just click copy. And then at the bottom, very bottom of the file, click paste. Control X, Y, enter. And that's it. So we go back down here, go to options, boot order, untick net, because we're not booted from the network. Move IDE2 to the top, then IDE0 below that. Click OK, go to console, click start now. So it's going to um, begin the boot process. So it's pretty um, easy from here. So it's going to bring up UEFI shell. So we're going to press enter, enter again. Then we're going to do the following. FS0 colon backslash. For the backslash, it's alt GR and then hashtag on UK keyboards. Anything else it's fine. System library. Also I'm pressing tab to fill it out. So we press tab there, core services, backslash boot.efi. Once you've got all that, enter. And then macOS will begin to boot. So I'm just gonna uh wait for that and I won't keep you waiting. So here we are, we're going to go into disk utility first because we need to format our disk. So we're going to go to view at the top and show all devices. And then you'll see um, on external, for some reason it's uh, labeled external on High Sierra because we set it as SATA probably. We're going to do erase and then I'm going to just call this Macintosh HD. Format, leave it as macOS extended journal, click erase. Now it's going to do that. Then click done. Close that, go double click into install macOS. And then we're ready to actually install. So we click continue here. Agree to all terms. Um, make sure you read them. Click agree and then select the disk and click install so you can see it doesn't take that long at all if you're on an SSD but I'll tell you why I've chose High Sierra a lot of you are complaining about your GPUs not being supported so High Sierra does support lots of Nvidia GPUs so that's why I've done that so I'm gonna wait for the three minutes because uh, I won't keep you wet so you can see we've rebooted, we just want to press enter again and then um, wait a, another round. Um, so yeah. So you can see we're back in the open core menu, you just press enter. This will be the final time that it boots up. So, uh, let's wait. So, we're actually in the initial setup process, so I'm going to select United Kingdom. And I'm just going to go through the setup process um, and make sure to skip Apple ID um, as that won't work just yet. So here we are on a High Sierra desktop. So we're going to first need to transfer the AFI folder. So to do this, we need to um, actually open up my GitHub. So github.com forward slash Harvey's VE forward slash tutorials. If it'll let me do that. And then go on to High Sierra. And you can see here that we have um, the Open Core ISO that we minted. We now need to install Open Core Configurator. So, Open Core Configurator on the internet. And then scroll down. The website isn't very good. Download here. Scroll down. Download the latest version and then wait for it to download um, 
Once it's downloaded, it should decompress itself. Show that in Finder. Right click and open it. We can close that. And then click open. And then we have it open here. So if we go to Tools, Mount EFI, we want to mount the one from the EFI O. So it's the QEMU hard disk media. This is the actual open core ISO. So we want to mount the partition into our password. Open up the partition and drag the EFI onto the desktop. So it's going to drag itself over in due course. And it takes its time and then we're just going to unmount that partition and mount the new one so we'll click open partition and drag the EFI into the new one once that's done unmount the partition close open code configurator and I want you to shut down the Mac so I'm going to untick reopen windows and click shut down so once it's uh, actually shut down, we're going to remove the IDE drives as we actually don't need them anymore. Um, so, once it's shut down, as you can see, it's shut down. Click on hardware and just detach both the IDE 0 and IDE 2 drives. Once you've done that, um, we're actually ready to pass through our GPU. Now, this guide assumes that you've got IOMMU enabled in both your BIOS and your. Um, actual Proxmox installation. If you're unsure how to use that, uh, please visit the uh, Proxmox GPU pass-through to Windows 11 where I've got a full in-depth guide on how to do it. But we want to click Add PCI Device and then add your device, mine's a GT630. Do not add the audio controller, just the GPU. Tick all functions and then click on Advanced and click ROM bar as well. Un leave these unchecked because it doesn't really matter especially with PCI Express even though you are using a PCI Express slot it still um, works just the same so if we click add go back to console we're then ready to start up our virtual machine so now if we start up the virtual machine so I'll click start now you can see on the second display um, very soon you'll see that we will get a display output and this is without installing any kecks because High Sierra doesn't need any kecks so you'll see in a few moments we'll get a display output on the monitor now this is from the HDMI output of the GT630 that I've passed through um, so make sure you've got a um, display output cable going to your TV or monitor whatever you use but uh, once we get three quarters of the way, you can see that the monitor is now lighting up. And soon we will get the uh, High Sierra logon page. So um, it can take a few moments. Um, but once it's done, you can see that we have a grey screen on the monitor. And then in front of us, we have the password. So if we enter the password. We're going to load in. You can see the High Sierra backgrounds come on. If I full screen this on the main display, go to System Settings or System Preferences, sorry, used to Ventura Displays, and then um, Gather Windows. So we're all on both on the same display. We want to do Arrangement and then Mirror Displays. So now you can see on the second display we've got a full um, mirror of the main one. And all you want to do is optimize it for the actual second display. Once that's done, if we go to About This Mac, you can see the graphics are still not working on the main screen, but on the actual second screen, you can see that they're brilliant. So you can see it's now showed up and we're ready to use it. Now, um, you can actually pass through USBs um, and ports, which I'll show you right now. So to pass through USBs, we're actually going to need to shut down High Sierra. So I'm going to do that. And once it's shut down, we're going to go to the hardware section. Add USB device. And then use USB port. This one here is my 
USB keyboard and mouse combo so I'm going to click that don't worry about it saying unplugged that's because the actual keyboard and mouse is off but the USB port is still there and then untick use USB 3 and click add and just as simple as that you have a keyboard and mouse output so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like if you need any help please visit our discord server that's linked in the description below but that's going to be it for this video thanks ever so much for watching goodbye